All right, so we got our valley flashing all set and done on this side. So the first thing we did was set this valley over here. We had to get around the rake a little bit and we, we had an 812 going into a 1212 over here. So it was a little complicated, but it really wasn't that bad. It was much more complex over here because we had the valley transition and we had an 812, a 1212, and a 412 all going into each other, intersecting at that point down there. Now, honestly, this is the first time we've ever even done a metal roof with a valley. So, you know, we're a little bit worried about it, not sure exactly what we were gonna do, but I think it turned out great. So first thing we did was get the layout of the roof and layout of our panel seams, how we wanted them all to line up. So when laying everything out, we used this peak right here in the back of the house as our reference point on where we wanted to lay everything off of. And we're going to center a panel right here. So we're gonna have a rib here and a rib here, and right here is actually the center of a panel. And the reason we did that is because it makes everything fall out good with our chimney back there and it makes everything fall out really well on our valleys back here since we have an 812 on both sides and we're going to want the seams of the metal roof to line up on both sides of the valley. And it also worked out down here pretty well to get everything fairly centered. So we use the Pythagorean theorem to get a line that's perfectly uh, perpendicular to the ridge and the drip edge down there. And you know, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we measured from that point all the way down to the drip edge, got a total measurement. Then we measured over 12 feet. You could measure over six feet. You could measure over 20 feet, it doesn't matter. And then you do your calculation, A squared plus B squared, and then that'll get you what your C squared number is or your hypotenuse. And then you measure up and then you have to make adjustments to make sure that you get a perfect 90 degrees down there. Fifteen eight and three eighths. Let's try that. This line could be crooked. Yeah, that's 316th right there. Right. And from that center measurement over there, we were able to figure out what the length of our first panel needed to be. So these panels are 16 inches wide, but after you put them in and lay them out, they actually end up laying 15 and 7 eighths of an inch. So when we measure these out, the center of each seam ends up being 15 and 7 eighths of an inch apart from each other. So then after we got our layout figured out on this roof plane, we laid a few sheets here just to make sure that we got going nice and square and to make sure that our layout was working and we verified that with some measurements that went all the way across to that line. So then you just multiply it out and then you can get your layout. So then we measured over to here to figure out where these seams were going to be. So once we reached that point, we set this bottom valley piece in place and then we had to lay these first four pieces and then set this slope transition in place before we could set this top valley piece in place. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, right there. And that's because this slope transition needs to slide under this valley. And so to put this slope transition on, you put your Z-bar flashing down first with some butyl tape under it. And then we chalked a line that corresponds with the top of our transition piece. And then we just bent an angle back here so that it would run into our 1212. And then we set our valley flashing up here and we just cut out the profile that would roughly line up with what we have down here. And then we put on our cleat. That's pretty much all there was to it. I think it turned out really well. It looks good. It's going to be very watertight. We didn't rely a lot on caulking or butyl tape to make it watertight. It's all basically mechanical flashing, metal flashing. So the water is just going to run right off. And then we begin laying up here on the 1212. And so first thing tomorrow, we're going to lay both sides of this 1212 and get the ridge set because uh, those don't really have to line up with anything. They just have to match each other. Plus they're not going to because this is a 1212. This is a 412. These ribs are never going to line up. And then after that's done and we get our valley flashing on, then we're going to come over the top and try to match these seams down here with the seams up here. So when we're going, we're going to measure a lot and check as we go along. You can have a little bit of adjustment as you're going to make up an eighth to a quarter of an inch, you know, over the course of like four panels or so, you can make an adjustment however you need to do forward or back or pull it to make sure that this top seam is going to line up with this bottom seam. Then after we get over the top and get the seams lined up, then we're going to work down here all the way across and get our transition piece put on all the way across. Then we'll probably get all the valley flashing done over here. I'll be able to record it this time because hopefully my camera won't die. 
So the first problem that we encountered when we were doing that set over there is these drip edges aren't even and they're and they're not going to plane out even because you got a 412 with a 1212. So what we kind of did was we took this drip edge and we we cheated it up a little bit with a handbrake. We just kind of forced it to bend up and then we cut a little extra piece like that in there and we we squeezed it together and we uh, put a pop rivet right there to hold it in place. Then when we put our valley, it all kind of wrapped around on the point. You can see it right there. That's how it all came together. So now we're gonna put a hem on the metal so that it'll hook over the edge of the drip right here and get a, get a nice watertight edge. Okay. Same spot. I think you gotta go that way a little bit. Right there. There. And push that in and then cut the bottom off. All right. All right, so we've gotten all the way across right here on our bottom roof on the 412. And we've got this bottom valley piece set in place and we got the cleat on this side secured. So next we're gonna do our long panels here with our long angles. Then after we get all the panels full, then we're gonna go across with our Z-bar flashing over to here. But then after the Z-bar, we're gonna run our other flashing piece over and it's gonna come up and bend up the valley. Then we're gonna set our final valley piece right here, just like we did over there on that side. We already have the other long valley set. That was a pretty easy valley to set. There's no transition over there. It's just uh, 812 to 1212 all the way down to the drip edge. All right, so now we got the bottom porch roof all the way done, all the way across. That valley piece is set. Now we're gonna put on our Z-bar flashing all the way across. 
And when we do that, we're going to run a line across right where we want that Z-bar flashing to be and just hold it in place with some clamps. We actually have all the Z-bar flashing already prepped beforehand with butyl tape on, so we just gotta set them in place and then screw and drill them down. Screw this up here because of my... All right. Perfect. So we're gonna go down and press them all in place. The butyl tape does a pretty good job of holding them in place before we uh, actually drill out the holes that are already drilled in the Z flashing. And then we'll come back, drill the hole out, and screw them down. So that's how you do your last piece of Z-bar flashing when you're coming into a valley. All right, so we got our Z-bar flashing done all the way across the roof, and now we have to put on this piece, which is our 412 to our 812 flashing transition on all the way across. So we're going along and we're masking off the uh, top part of the rib. So when we put this piece on, it doesn't catch right here and get all your paint all marred up, which uh, can be an issue sometimes when putting on metal roofs. Okay, you you walk along and try to work them in. I'll hold. I'll try to hold this flange up. I'm about six inches overlap. Yeah, I just caught about an inch there. Don't go out any farther. Come my way a little. Well, don't go too far. Push it up in there. Alright, go down there.
All right, so now all that's left to do to get all of our valley flashing set in place is to set this valley, and we're gonna do that tomorrow or the next day. Pull it to you a little. Yeah, it's about the same as that one. It's about a half inch below here. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's see right there. Get where you want it. Put this piece of flashing in here, so hopefully. Uh, yay! It would have been a lot worse than that. You would have had all yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good to use uh, aluminum flashing or tape when you can. I don't think tape would have even done it. No. <laughs> I guess just hold that, press that down in there, right there I guess. Put it over the top. We'll just cut this back here, like something like that, and that, and then cut off. Cut off the V and folded it down over the other. See what we v. need I guess. I guess we can go ahead and uh, screw this down. <laughs> right. Cut that a little, a little more there. A little bit more. There. <laughs> Yeah, give me a little more silicone, I guess, and a hammer. That's on the ground now. It didn't mess up anything. Know that I need the. I think I'm done with the snips. I don't know. I think that looks pretty damn good.
All right, so we got our valleys all set and our cleat run. And then what we're gonna do next is uh, do the metal on this 12, 12 roof on both sides. And then we're gonna run the ridge cap back on the top and bend it up so it runs up the 812. And we're gonna take another piece, uh, a specialty made piece that goes over the top of the ridge cap, just like we did over here. It's kind of hard to see that piece. There's actually a, a piece that sits on top of the ridge cap as it's folded up. So uh, it's gonna be impossible for water to kind of get in there and work its way back up. So now all that's left to do with this valley is to run the cleat all the way up 
over the top of that uh, piece that we put right there to protect the ridge and then run the metal. Looks like they line up all right. All right, so that's pretty much it for the valley. That's how we got over the top. And then we're just going to work our way down with the panels and finish this side of the roof off. All right, so that's it. Got the roof all done on this side. All that's left to do is put a little bit of ridge cap right here. And we're going to be good to go for the year. The next year, I'm going to do all of this on this side. reason I'm waiting is because we got this breezeway right here in between the uh, garage and the house. We're going to make it a little bigger and enclose it because right now it's open. So that'll be another video for another day. Some of you may have noticed that about halfway through this video, I ended up with a cast on my hand. And unfortunately, that's a result of working up here on the metal roof. I was over there on the 1212 and my foot went out from under me and I had to put out my arm like this and uh, I went down right on a sharp edge of metal and I cut myself really bad right here. It actually required surgery to repair a few things, a, uh, a tendon and a small sensory nerve. I'm expected to make a full recovery. It shouldn't be that big of a deal according to the doctor. So um, right now I, I got good mobility. Everything's feeling better. But I guess... Uh, the main point is when you're up on a metal roof, be very careful, especially when it's wet. Uh, you're not going to get good traction at all. And uh, in fact, I wouldn't even recommend going up on a roof if it's even a little bit damp. Just wait till it dries out. Also, wear you know the proper personal protective equipment like cut gloves. And in my case, uh, I could have been wearing some sleeves that were cut resistant. It probably would have saved me, you know, at least a little bit. So then after that happened, I was up there with one hand doing what I could. Unfortunately, my dad had to do most of the work. Thanks, Dad. I wouldn't have been able to get it done without him. So anyway, now that we got that out of the way, I think it turned out really well. Once we get uh, something on those peaks and a little bit of aluminum around the fascia, I think it's going to look a lot better and tie the colors together. Also, those ribs lined up pretty good when we went over the top. They're a little bit off, but I don't think it's enough that most people would notice. So that wraps it up for this video. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.